Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what we're going to show you guys is a real technique. This is a knockdown dash. It's interior. This finish is about 90 years old. Now, it has many coats of paint on it. And so I spoke with the homeowner. I came in and I said, gee, do you see this patch here? And he says, no. And I said, good answer because I can't I can match textures very well, but we have about 10 within a wall here. And when you have so many within a wall, it's tougher to do it. It's best to tear it all off and start fresh. Anyhow, I'll give you guys some tips. Okay, they've got old timber lath. You can call it redwood lath. All it is is furring strips. You've got your studs coming down, and the furring strips are on that. The mud adheres by mushrooming through these keys. It goes through the other side, mushrooms on the back, and of course it helps to adhere to this. Now, if you show over here, I'm going to point out a few things, guys. We've got a lot of patchwork here. Now the fellow says, gee, how do we patch the holes? I said, well, you could use sheetrock. You could use 3.4 mesh. You could use different types of wire. You can put the old timber lath back, which is tedious. There's so many different ways to do it, guys. Don't get caught up in which way is the correct way. There's a lot of ways to do it. Anyhow, now, now that the timber lath is removed, and these are just buckling areas. There are so many areas that were buckling that had to come out. We removed all the ones that I personally thought had to come out. And now, what, what I've done is I've taken this plaster weld. You see this stuff down here? It's made by Larson's, but there's a lot of types of plaster welds. And what that means is I put it on these strips right here, the wood timber lath. Why do I do that? Because I want my new plaster to adhere to not only mushroom inside here, but to adhere. Plus it removes all the dust, guys. Now what I'll do is to make a, a simple explanation is I'll take some mud here and I can go on for days about the types of mud you can use a lot of folks watch what we do and they say gee Kirk how come you don't use uh, structolite and the, the fact is I've used structolite hundreds of times but what we do guys is same day plaster with structolite you cannot do same day plaster structolite I've been using that so long 30 years ago even, they used to come in 80 pound bags. Now it comes in 50 pound bags. But with, with this particular uh, mud here, this is called 20 minute mud. What does 20 minute mud mean? That means you've got 20 minutes to put it on. It's sort of like a fix all if you're familiar with that. So within 20 minutes, this is gonna be hard. It will not be workable anymore. And they have five minute mud, 10 minute mud, 20, 40, 60, 90, you name it, they have it. But the reason I'm not using Structolite is because we do same day applications usually. If I was doing this whole room, I would coat it with Structolite first. And Structolite comes in 50 pound bags, has perlite in it, and you can put it a quarter inch to three inch or uh, three quarters of an inch thick. And, coat the whole room, then come back the next day and put a Keens or a Diamond or something like that. Anyhow, th now that I got this one patch here, we're going to back up. And I, since I still got this mud right here, I'm going to hit this other area here. Just because I still have this mud, guys. Mud on my hawk. I figure I'll use it up right here. There's still quite a bit of areas we've got to do, but for the sake of explanation I will just do this and dash it okay I've got to do this wall here too but this wall is coming out three quarters of an inch thick then they're gonna put the trim here on here I'm gonna trim this out here but getting back to the dash now I'm gonna put this away and just um, come back to it now I'm gonna show you guys the dash this way we compress six hours into as minimal as possible so you folks watching this have a kind of an idea of what the heck we're doing this is a dash brush there's about 10 different types of dash brushes I have some dash brushes that are square like this 8 inch bristles 4 inch bristles 6 I've even dashed using whisk 
brooms. So you put three together because I seen particular textures and I thought I can match that. Now what we're doing is Jason mixed up this mud here. Now this is 20 minute mud also. Do we need 20 minute mud? No, we could use 40, 60, 80, 120, but we just happen to be using the 20 minute mud because by the time I'm done with that, that's going to be ready to dash over there. Okay, this light switch. I went ahead and I put some mud on it. Now I allowed that to set. Now for the sake of dashing, I put the plastic on here so we don't make a big mess and I'm going to do this with every hole. Now we dip this dash brush into this soupy mud. Look at this. Uh, that's, that's pretty soupy. Now this in itself takes, it takes a lot of practice guys. And this is my first time today, my first hole that I'm going to do. The idea is get most of the mud off of here, otherwise it's just going to splatter. And can this mud be looser? Yes. Can it be tighter? Yes. But the idea is to match this texture here. I want it wetter because if it's wetter, it'll give this a smoother appearance. If it's real dry, then it'll give a, a much drier appearance. It won't match that. So now I'm going to do, guys, is this is called dashing like that. You ever hear a dash of salt? Just a dash of salt from the old days? Well, they, that's just a dash of mud right here. And the idea is get, get the perimeter, get the insides, get it where we think is, is close enough to theirs. Now, now I want to get all of it. So we're doing that there. Now this is 20 minute mud. Now their, their mud right here has been knocked down in some areas. What's knocked down means? That means when this sets, you take a trowel and knock it down. Unfortunately, this side right here hasn't been knocked down too much. So again, I'll just I'll hit around the perimeter a little bit better, tie it in. Then here's another thing too. If you got some goop where it's too much, you can take the brush here and just tap it like this. That's an old plastering technique right there, guys. It smooths it out a little bit. All right, guys. Jay was telling me, Dad, of all the patches you could do here, you did the cheesiest little patch. And I said, fair enough. So what we did is we finished everything, but over here, I'll actually show you how to do it. Because Jay says, Dad, you gotta, you got to dash it, and then you got to dab it. They're not going to understand what to do on that small patch. So we're going to show you how to do it with this patch here. And then you can see all the completions of everything. Let me show you something. This doesn't match at all. It's just a, a patch that I've just done. So a simple technique, guys. Now, this is called a dash, but I'm going to change the appearance of this 100% by using just the dash brush on edge. The uh, little techniques, guys. There's, you can use a float, a wet float, and tap it. You can use a a brush like I'm doing and tap it but the idea is when you're done there's it's got a match it's got a match very close or on the money now this is just one way to do this patch I, I can do it about five six different ways get some mud up here and then I'll show you a simple way to match this finish here okay say We've got most of that covered. And if you look close, that won't match. Now I can match this with a float at this stage by dabbing it, but it has to be a wet float and you really got to know what you're doing. And since that way is complicated and you guys might try to duplicate it, you're I won't gonna show you. What we're doing now is we're taking just the tip of the brush and we're going around the perimeter. We'll go just around the perimeter and just lightly tap it. And that mud's got to be wet. It's soupy and just kind of pull it. You pull it like so and that matches much tighter than what they than what just the dash brush alone will do. A lot of techniques guys And you look at this right here and say, well, gee, that's a lot smoother. Yes, it has about 15 coats of paint. But this is just another way. 
And lastly, if you, if you look at a wall and you say, that's a little tighter, you can, you can, after about 10 minutes, you can just tap it with a steel trowel and it'll match it even, it'll, it'll give it more of a knockdown, but right here we're more of a dash. Anyway, simple technique using a dash brush, dabbing it. Uh, we, we used to do that a long time ago. Anyway, my name is Kirk. I'm with Kirk Giordano Plastering. We thank you folks for watching, and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one.